gas attached to it. The center of gravity was way out in left field someplace. I literally, in a short period of time, had to learn how to maneuver all over again. When I put in an input, I'd have to know what the output was. But you'd be surprised when you're in deep trouble how quickly you learn. I finally got to the proper attitude, let that man he mentioned, worked fine, moved us over to what we thought was now the free return course again. And of course, by this time, the moon is getting to be very, very big. Still in the window of the lunar module. I looked over at Fred Hayes. Fred was making some comment, uh, some, some things on a, a little envelope, looking at some computations. He said, Jim, probably don't have to tell you this. You probably already know. We're not going to get home. These batteries are going to die before we get back to the Earth. The water we have on board uh, is not sufficient because not just the drink, but we have to cool all our electronic systems. We might have enough oxygen because we have it in the backpacks back here. Obviously, we're not going to be on the lunar surface, so we can tap into that. And they said, Fred, you're absolutely correct. The way we are right now, we're not going to be home. And then finally, after what appeared to be a long time, as the moon kept getting bigger and bigger, we were starting to get, get information from mission control. Gene was bringing in all the experts, getting everybody together, getting that good leadership going, that teamwork to figure out two things. What went wrong, but more importantly, how do we get these guys back home again? And after what appeared to be a long, long time, I got a communique from Mission Control. They said, Jim, we've been looking over everything very carefully, looking over your situation, what the problems might be, and we've all come to the conclusion that the way you are right now, uh, you're not going to get home. 